up YouTube! Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Full Efficient channel. Today is August 29th, 2019. It is going to be my outing number 131 of this year. And folks, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be fishing a very cool location today i mean in my personal opinion of course let me give you guys a view of where i am check it out now it is a beautiful day down here the jersey shore and this right here my friends is actually a tidal saltwater pond i mean isn't that cool huh not to mention did i mention just now that it's tidal yeah this is tidal right so this water right here that is flowing out right now, the tide is actually going down. That water goes to the ocean. And then when the tide comes in, right, you don't see the water flowing out. It actually flows in. You have water from the ocean flowing into this pond, right? Now, this is not the first time that I have fished a saltwater pond before. If you guys remember when I was down in Charleston, South Carolina, I, fit, I fished this place called Colonial Lake that was a saltwater pond and I caught some very interesting species in there, right? I caught some red drum, the Cyanops ocellatus. I caught one of <laughs> I caught one of my biggest ever is spot croaker in there, the Leostomus zanturus. And the main objective for today, of course, is for me to explore this place and see if there are any exotic species of fish around this area i want to catch some new species now there have been collections of different species done in this particular saltwater pond in the past and folks ladies and gentlemen i have to tell you they found some very very cool species over here that are kind of like very very rare for new jersey now the thing is of course it is not easy to catch those fish because the quantity of those species is very limited so today this fishing session is going to be not about the sizes of the fishes per se but it is going to be all about quality over quantity is species wise i really want to try to catch some of those rare species of fish okay anything could happen in this fishing session i could get skunked and not catch anything i could catch something all right i could catch something extremely cool so stay tuned Oh man, I'm so excited. Let's get the fishing started. I'm not even done setting up my stuff yet. I just got my ultralight outside of the bag and I already see something down here that I really want to catch on hook and line. Now you see, I got my polarized glasses on. I don't know how well you guys can see. There's something very, very, very tiny right at the tip of my rod right here in the range of one and a half inches that I will try to microfish. I don't think that's a killifish. I think that is something a little bit different. We'll find out. Did I get it? Did it get it? No, it did not. It's okay. Little by little. I don't know what it is though. Dude, it's not a shrimp. It's 100% some type of uh, some type of weird fish. I got him. I got him. Unbelievable. I did really get it holy cow dude i got it in the mouth what is this dude oh my goodness do you guys see that do you guys see that what is this holy cow let's put it in the photo tank dude i caught it in the mouth look at that micro fishing at its best folks this is truly exciting i gotta tell you this much so I've been fishing here for less than five minutes and I saw this little black fish just swimming down there about one and a half inches long, right? I decided to tie on a little Tanago hook, just a tiny little piece of bloodworm on it and check it out. I mean, I can't believe it. I still can't believe it that I actually hook it <laughs> or hook a line. I have no clue what this is in the moment. You guys can have a view of it. Very, very tiny creature right over here i took plenty of shots now i believe at first glance that this may really be the black drum like a very very tiny tiny black drum 
but I am not 100% so I'm going to post a few photos here after I release this guy if you guys actually have any idea what this little fella is I mean this is by far if it is a black drum this is by far by far the smallest black drum that I have ever caught in my life on hook and line right so anyway let me release this guy over here I'm gonna give you guys a close-up shot of the little fish man it was just swimming like right over here under all the mummy chog right the fundulus heteroclitus I still can't believe it man I just put the thing right in front of him and the fish just took it like that all right let me give you guys a close view of how this thing looks here outside of the water okay my hands are wet and everything look at that tiny little creature about one and a half inches with a little black dot at the tail okay I'm not gonna let it flip any longer here I'm just gonna leave it over here all right and hopefully it's going to swim away oh look at that it went down already I really really think that it's some kind of bottom feeder I'm thinking I'm leaning towards black drum but I'm not 100% sure but anyways this is a great way to start our day so <laughs> first species of the fishing session today not bad decent depth good then the other one man is just gonna put regular hooks oh i had a bite already what 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 i think that was a bite what okay maybe maybe i'm going crazy maybe i'm going crazy this is the first rod that i put down there with a size 18 hook with a piece of night crawler i may really be going crazy i don't know i'll just leave it down there to see if anything is going to take it that's what i'm talking about i got all my three setups ready all of them in the water i got a size 18 hook all the way down with a little piece of night crawler two size 8 hooks with pieces of night crawler in the deepest hole right uh in this whole pond where the water is going out to the ocean and then my third rod the one that i'm holding right now is just a micro rod that i have a little tanago on with little pieces of blood worm i'm going to be sight fishing right sight micro fishing for exotics around the shoreline but you know one thing i have to tell you guys it is not as easy as you guys think to target these micros over here like the one i just caught there was only one down there there wasn't two or three just one so i mean you guys get the idea right it's really do or die situation if i had missed that fish on the micro hook and that fish actually fell the hook that fish would not come back to bite on my stuff for the rest of the day you guys get the idea if i spot anything exotic over here i'm going to have only one chance of catching it one chance but anyways let's continue fishing and see what else is going to show up for the day I got it got a killer fish hell yeah and the beauty of micro fishing over here is not just that I can catch this killer fish and kind of identify see which species they are I can actually live line this killer fish right away on my other rod right so let's check it out first the second species of this video what it is we got here what I believe to be the fundulus heteroclitus the mummy chog but I just want to make extra sure. So let's see what we got here. Is this the mummy chog? I am almost positive. <laughs> Sorry, little fella, but sometimes sacrifices must be made. And you are going to be our sacrifice to hopefully a bigger fish down there, right? So there we go. One little juicy mummy chog. I'm going to cast it out there now. what we got here that's a different species 100 percent oh yeah look at that it's a silver side now that is neat all right let's put it over here let's see what we got i think this is an atlantic silver side the menidia menidia but let's put in the photo tank so i can confirm it well those rods have been pretty quiet but the micro fishing ladies and gentlemen has been pretty darn good 
I got here with me my third species of this fishing session. I know that you guys can't see very well, right? It's just swimming happily inside the photo tank right now. This right here is the Atlantic Silverside, aka the Menidia Menidia. There are different species of silversides, right? In the United States of America. And this is only one of them. Let me show you guys why is it that this thing is called the silver side okay if i can get it out of the photo tank here it's good it's called the silver side of course as you guys will see because its body is all silvery look at that huh it is very very silvery as a matter of fact and this species of fish in particular is actually very very fragile okay it dies very very easy it is good bait to use but since i got mummy chogs over here with me mummy chogs survive much better than silver sides so I'm using live mummy chalks on this rod instead of the silver sides. Some bigger mummy chalks were all over the place. All right there. I mean, these are not big, big, but... Let's see. Yeah, this will work. That's a bigger mummy chog. Let me see, is this a male or a female mummy chog? Yeah, this will work. This is a male mummy chog. Check it out. A beautiful male mummy chog right here that I'm going to use as bait on one of my bigger rods. Some species in the United States of America, such as killifishes, some of them, they have what is called dimorphism, right? Meaning that when you catch a male or a female, they have different colors or and patterns on them, right? The mummy chog is one of them. This is the male mummy chog. The female mummy chog actually looks quite different and then you have other species like for example the hairy blenny right the nuchipinis that if you catch a male it is very very different than a female even though they are the same species for the mummy chug i really like the male to be bait because they are a little bit more colorful than the female so i'm gonna put this one right on that rod right there that is not good I, mean, I knew that there was some junk down there what is this i'm bringing some junk up here definitely bringing some junk ay 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 goodness gracious dude what is down there this is my first nag of the day too but thankfully it is coming up oh yeah branches no is that a crab holy moly yo it's a blue crab dude ain't no snack yo this, this I, I, dude this is a dude I, I can take this blue crab to eat man holy cow yo this is a nice size blue crab over here i don't know what the regulations for new jersey are at the moment so i'm not going to take it but th th yo this is definitely like a yo this is a this is an edible size blue crab right here Yo, you're lucky. You're lucky the Asian's not going to eat you today. Just go, go back where you belong, man. Got my mummy chalk one, but that, that's a nice blue crab right there. Damn. Of course. Got ziggas of trunks down there. Is it another crab? There may just be another crab on my line. There's so many crabs in here. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, it's a crab. Look at that. I think I think it is a crab. Uh, oh, oh, it's actually fighting. What? what the heck, dude, I never seen no crab fight. What is this? I got two crabs, dude. Yo, I, I should have brought my bush over here, man. These crabs are all good eating too. Look at that. Good size. Good size blue crabs, dude. Good size blue crabs for real. Look at this. Two of them holy cow they loving the killifish yo double up crab dang son oh man it's all mummy chug wait a moment is this a mummy chug wait a moment is this a mummy chug or is this a new species for me? Wait a moment. This is a new species for me. Yes. This is the strength. Yes. 
yes, mummy chog after mummy chog, mummy chog after mummy chog, man, mummy chog after mummy chog. I finally caught my striped killerfish. Species number 141, yes! Striped killerfish. This is a striped killerfish, the Fundulus Mayalis. Yes! Oh, I'm shaking, man. Let's put it in the photo tank. <laughs> oh, that's it! Yes! I was just yelling and laughing over here. And people in that parking lot, some of the people saw it. They were looking over here. I'm, I'm, I'm some kind of crazy, you know? Well, I tell you what, man. Got to celebrate because I've been after this species for a long, long time time man and I am not ashamed of who I am micro fishing is part of life listing it is part of multi-species fishing and you know if you don't micro fish you don't add species to your list man this is a species number 241 for me check it out the striped killifish the fundulus mayalis this is one of those species, as I'm going to show you guys right now, that has what I just told you guys, right? The sexual dimorphism. The males and the females of the species are actually different from one another. So the one that I have over here with me, if I am not wrong, is the female striped killifish that has horizontal black bars on its body. The male of this species, believe it or not, has vertical black stripes. So I will try to catch one of the males, right, so that you guys can kind of see. But yeah, I'm going to release this guy now. It's species number 241. Thank you so much, a little killifish. Thank you so much for showing up and, you know, being part of my species list. Look at that. This is a beautiful little killifish, right? A lot of people in New Jersey, New York, actually use this little killifish as bait. And they are there around, you know what I'm saying? But catching them on hook and line, unless you find them, well, let's just say it's not that easy, okay? All right, here, go back where you belong. Oh, yes. Ah, 241, son. Got a whole school of striped killifish. This is it. I think this is another striped killifish. You see, the thing with microfishing, is that once you get your target species in the water, oh, easy. Once you have your target species, you kind of know how they look like. So it is much, much easier to target them again, right? There we have it, another striped killifish. I'm gonna put it in the photo tank and show you guys how many I caught now. I was so, I was so excited just like moments ago to catch my first ever striped killifish. Now check it out, huh? inside this photo tank, I actually got four striped killifish and I just wanted to show you the sexual dimorphism that I was talking about to you guys earlier, right? There are three females inside this tank and there's one male. Can you guys distinguish which one is the male and which ones are the females? Like I told you guys previously in this video, right? The male is the one with the vertical bars. So it would be this little fella right here swimming to the right now, down. All the other three are females. I'm going to take a photo of the male now, so I kind of have a pair, and then I'm going to release all this fish. Man, this is awesome. I am more than satisfied today with all the different species of fish that I caught over here. Check it out, huh? I just took a few shots for you guys, so I will include it after I release this fish. You guys can have an idea now of which ones are males and which ones are females if you ever catch the species of fish out there in the wild. I have to say, man, I, I am so happy. And now that I have caught this species, I can really, really recognize them when I see them swimming in the water. Like the differences between these ones and the mummy chogs. Now when I look at them on top of the water, I know exactly which species is which. Isn't that crazy? Like before, for me, all look the same, right? That's why I say, man, the thing about multi-species fishing, from the moment that you catch a new species and you catch one of them, you actually have an idea of how how different they are compared to the others. That's that's really nuts, man. Pretty darn cool, man. Let's 
see if anything. Let's see if the size 8 hook catches anything. Whoa, what the? Dude, look at the size of that silver side, bro. Now that is a big Atlantic silver side, okay? I decided to tie on a size 8 hook, you know, just to see if there's anything a little bit different over here. Dude, there's some big silver side down there. Look at that. I didn't even realize that. I only saw the small ones. This is up to date. Very likely one of my biggest silver sides ever. Wow. This is pretty interesting. You know when you go to the market or the tackle shops and you buy the silver sides for bait, right? And then they give you like silver sides that are so long like this. They're just like this one. Holy moly. Up to date. This is my biggest silver side. Look, look at that. Holy cow. That's about four, four inches Atlantic silver side right over there. That's crazy, man. Anyways, all right. It's not a new species now, but oh, oh dang, dang. Oh, the beast swam away. Interesting. What a beautiful place. I definitely need to do this type of fishing a little bit more often but it is currently 3 p.m and this is really all the time that i had today to do some fishing around this area i i really run out of time i was catching so many mummy chogs down there mummy chog after mummy chog after mummy chog right and then the striped killifish came came too so it was like striped killifish a striped killifish and then the silver sides came in it was silver side silver side and sadly i think i only got one new species for the day right i kind of say sadly but then on the other hand i am more than satisfied that i actually came out here and i got to add a new species to my list right not to mention that i even caught that little mystery fish that i have yet to identify I don't know exactly what it was i think it i mean it is definitely some type of bottom feeder right either maybe a juvenile black drum or maybe there's a possibility that it is a small northern kingfish the mentisihus saxatilis i would definitely need to go home it was a very dark fish so i would definitely need to go home and um check to see what it was i told you guys at the beginning of this video you know today's fishing session wasn't so much about the sizes as it was as it was the species right the fact that we landed like four different species of fish that is already phenomenal and i knew already that to catch some of the rarer species around here was going to be really really tough so i didn't really expect to come out here today and just be like successful 100 percent you see what i'm saying i am going to be coming back here in the future maybe in a month or a month and a half when it is fall and water temperature starts to drop a little bit to see if things are going to change or not but for now this is it it is time for me to go get something to eat i haven't eaten the whole day yet so thank you very much for watching this video i appreciate it tight lines and take it easy yeah okay the little white perch oh wait wait are you got to be kidding me that's a spot croaker that's a spot croaker the Leostomus Zanturus. <sighs> you know, this is the thing about the Skugel River. This is supposed to be 100% fresh water. And then suddenly you find a saltwater species up this river, right? This is 100% the spot croaker, the Leostomus Zanturus. I have